that did this project with me, Nancy Allen. She's also at the University of Utah. So let me start out with the background of the issue. So individuals with type 1 diabetes are getting older. When you think about type 1 diabetes, we think of juvenile diabetes, only kids have it. And we don't think about those people who are aging. And so really, um, this is kind of an issue that we need to address. When we think about older adults with diabetes, they have a pronounced higher rate of hypoglycemia than um, when they were younger. And that hypoglycemia results in other complications, cardiovascular issues, heart, uh, CVAs, seizures, and, and ultimately sometimes hospitalizations or even death. So one of the products that's now on the market is real-time continuous glucose monitoring. This is a device that senses glucose every five minutes, and it displays it on a receiver like this. You can actually see what your blood sugar is in real time and actually track it every five minutes. And we know through research that it, this is actually very supportive in children and adults, but really all of the older adults were excluded from studies. And so this was something that I wanted to address. So the purpose of this study was to identify why real-time CGM was important for diabetes management in people who were and were not using CGM. And just some background info, Medicare does not cover CGM. So if you're in this study and you had CGM, it's because you went out and purchased it yourself. So the methods, we did a, a survey and um, qualitative descriptive. We recruited from Facebook and uh, pretty much had a convenience sample, so examining those who had CGM and those who didn't. Um, and we got 22 individuals, so 11 people who were using continuous glucose monitoring and 11 that were not, they were not different in age or how long they've had diabetes. I mean, if you think of someone who had had type 1 diabetes for 58, 59 years, that's amazing. And gender was not different. Um, everybody was white in the sample, and there were no changes or differences in education. Um, really no differences in how they were using technology. So again, this is older than 65 years old. So when you think about the digital divide, a lot of us think about older adults not using as much technology, but these guys were still using some tech. And no differences here in how um, people were actually managing their diabetes, whether it was uh, multiple daily injections or an insulin pump. So one of the things that, one of the big take homes here, and I realize this is a smaller sample, but I think that this is still important. There was a significant difference in people who had hypo, severe hypoglycemia in the last year in those people who were not using CGM versus those who were. So a severe hypoglycemic event is where you required assistance from another person. So another family member had to come to your aid, the paramedics were called, or you needed to go to an emergency room. And so those people who did not have real-time CGM where that device could actually alarm you that your blood sugar was falling into a, a, a difficult state, um, they weren't notified of that and they, they fell into the severe hypoglycemia category. And then also, the severe hypoglycemia related to um, inability to operate a vehicle or falling was more pronounced in those, in those individuals that were not using CGM either. And then we asked people to give us some qualitative information. We just asked some open-ended questions. Tell us about your experience using CGM or why do you wish that you had it? Um, and these are the themes we came up with. So people found that real-time CGM really facilitated safety by preventing hypoglycemia, it improved quality of life, and that access was an issue. So looking at those themes, um, these are some of the samples of what people were saying. So why has not had to use glucagon since going on continuous glucose monitoring? Just think about the stress that is reduced not only with the individual patient but with the wife as well. That's a big deal to not have to give glucagon. That's such a stressor. And then the ability to detect a drift of, of hypoglycemia. So really paying attention to how this can prevent hypoglycemia. We know that it does it in kids. We know that it does it in adults. And why not older adults too? Why were these people excluded from all of these studies? The other thing that I, I um, spoke a little bit to is the quality of life. So that worry and stress over having a low blood sugar and not losing a life over. We know that dead in bed syndrome is a real thing. And if we can give someone a device, an older adult who might have difficulty stumbling to the kitchen to get juice because they're having a hypoglycemia event, we know older adults have hypoglycemia unawareness more often um, than younger counterparts. And so just giving people that extra safety net is really important. And then I think people were having, um, they really appreciated the ability to um, not have safety issues related to driving, um, falling, not having to uh, worry as much. 
And then over and over again, it was the access issue. And I told you Medicare doesn't cover continuous glucose monitoring. And, and that was apparent in, in what the participants in our study were really paying attention to. We had to pay this ourselves. And it's a big deal. Um, why, are, why is Medicare not covering this if it's such a lifesaver? And um, people are, are getting frustrated who have this technology now and then all of this sudden turn 65 and then they're cut off from this technology. And so I think we need to come up with um, better solutions for that. So in conclusion, we examined older adults with type 1 diabetes to identify why it was important. People were really accepting of the technology. They wanted it because it improved safety in their lives. They wanted it because it improved quality in their lives and the, the lives of the people who are living with them. And access is a big, big issue. Yeah.